Hey guys, it's Lauren. Um, welcome to my channel. I am going to be doing kind of an August update video. So let's go ahead and get started. So first thing on my agenda are going to be my whips and then I have a finish that's somewhat cross stitch related. And then I also have just kind of a few stash acquisitions and want to do a little bit of a flip through of one of the books that I bought. So if you're interested in that, kind of wait until the very end because I'm going to do that at the end because some people um, don't like kind of like flipping through the books and kind of seeing what all is available there. So um this this past month has been crazy. I went on vacation with my husband. We went to a board game convention called Gen Con in Indianapolis, Indiana. It was my first time going there and we had just a fantastic time. But kind of leading up to vacation, I was really busy with work and then getting back from vacation and kind of getting back in the swing of things. Um, has been super super busy for me so I didn't get as much stitching done as I had hoped but I am pleased kind of with the progress that I've had considering how much busyness I've kind of had in my personal life lately so let's get started my first whip that I had showed you guys from last time is a um, Jim Shore design and it's a kit from Mill Hill and it's the playing cards and what I'm working on is Jack and that's what it will look like when it's completed. And this has a lot of beading in it. I'm doing just the cross stitching first. And I did not get very much done on this, so this isn't very different from when you guys saw it last time, but this is where I am. This has kind of fallen to the wayside a little bit for me because I have a couple of other projects now that have become my priority. So I kind of work on this um, as I have some free time or I get bored of my other projects. I don't think that I had much of this done last time, this kind of breastplate area. So that's what I worked on and I actually took this on the plane with me to see if I could stitch while I was on the plane and I didn't do so hot. I actually started stitching um, this area here and I started kind of stitching this yellow here. I kind of got the yellow a little further down and then realized I had made a mistake and I had to frog it off. So I think it's just it's just too hard for me to concentrate on stitching while I'm either in the car or on an airplane or things like that. So um, it didn't work well for me. So Jack is really going to be something that's going to have pretty slow progress. Like I said, I have a couple things that have kind of taken priority for me. So um, Maybe I'll work on him a little bit this next month. You never know. Make it bored with, with what I'm doing. Um, my next whip is my Precious Moments. I talked about this last time. This is a gift that I'm doing for my parents. My goal kind of has been to get this done by Christmas, but I'm not in a rush. If I need to delay this or push this, it's, it's no problem for me. So just to remind you guys, this is what the pattern looks like. And um, last time I had talked to you guys, I mentioned I had worked on the deer and that I ended up having to frog it all because I just didn't like the way that it looked. So I got started on this one after I finished my update video for July um, and kind of got cracking on it and found that... Um, I was able to kind of restitch it and kind of once I got my tension right, it looked so much better. So let me show you guys where I got on this. So here's my deer. Looks so much better than it did before. It looked really, really holy. Like I could kind of see through the holes in the even weave. This is on a 28 count Lugana in antique, I think it's antique white. So he's two legged right now, but I think he's looking really, really good. I'm really pleased with it. Um, it stitches up actually pretty quickly. Um, so I'm going to definitely be working on this one a bit more um, this next month. But also, like I said, if I don't get this one done by December, it's not the end of the world for me. Um, I have some other things that have kind of taken priority for me. Um, oh, and that was one thing that I wanted to mention. So... Um, I kind of mentioned in my last little video about doing a, um, starting to do kind of review videos about some of the, some like different small businesses that I had discovered or different things that I had purchased or needles, floor frames, you know, all that kind of stuff. And thank you guys for your support and for your comments on that. Right now I'm kind of putting that a little bit on hold. Um, 
I got some, I guess, I got some constructive comments, and then I got some comments from some people who were, um, I guess, felt as though I was going to be swayed one direction or another, or didn't think that it would be fair, and it kind of took the wind out of my sails a little bit. So I just want to be thoughtful before I kind of approach doing some of those videos that I make sure that I have a really good feel for how I want to approach them, making sure that it's as fair as possible, but also at the same time kind of keeping my opinion um, on them. So um, I'm just going to think about that a little bit more. But one thing I did want to highlight is I do still want to highlight some of these places that I do find either online or um, that I kind of find on Facebook or Etsy that I think I've just had just to kind of let you know about some really positive experiences I've had. So I recently stumbled across a, um, and I'm going to pull this up here on my laptop because I kind of made some notes for myself. So I stumbled across um, a, a, a little store that on Facebook that does project bags and it's Deanna's Frame Covers and Storage is what the name of the Facebook group is. And um, I kind of saw that she was selling some project bags and got in touch with her and she directed me to her Facebook page and, and accepted me into it and I am so so pleased with the bags guys they are beautiful she has a large 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 selection of project bags she also does grime guards and she can do them in sets so if you're interested in having kind of the same fabric for your project bag and grime guards you can do them together and also her prices were really reasonable because a lot of places that I went that I like the project bags, the prices were a little bit outside of what I was willing to spend on a project bag. Um, so I kind of wanted to show those off for you guys for a minute just so you can just so you can see, you know, kind of what they look like um, and kind of how much they actually store. Because one thing too is I wanted to make sure that whatever project bags I ended up investing in, um, that they stored a lot. And I've talked about Nell before with Little Yellow House Craft. She also does really great project bags, I think, for really reasonable prices. And so, um, but for Deanna, I want to show you kind of the project bags that I got um, and talk a little bit about them. So this is one that I have here. And this is the 11 by 11 size. And I kind of want to show you a little bit like how much they actually store. So I asked her about, you know, when I order an 11 by 11, um, you know, can I store a lot in there? Can I keep another little bag or, you know, the pattern or things in there? And she said, yes. Yeah. She says that she actually gives a little bit more room in the bags than what is, um, than what's actually being, um, the, what the actual size is quoted so that you have a little bit of extra wiggle room in there. So what I can actually keep in this 11 by 11 bag is I can keep an entire eight and a half by 11 size pattern. I can keep my sewing bag, or not sewing bag, it's kind of my miscellaneous bag, I call it my Shasta bag. Um, I can keep all of my bags of my floss. And then I can actually keep my project on the Q-Snap in the bag as well. So um, they work really, really well for me. Uh, I like the size of the 11 by 11. A lot of my projects I fit on 11 by 11 Q-Snaps, but she also sells them in a wide variety of sizes. The um, other fabrics that I got is I got this floral pattern here. And all of the bags on the inside have a coordinating color that's on the inside of the bag. That's like a solid color so that you can, um, so it kind of matches, so it's really cute. And then I also got these little bees. And the little bees, I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of sparkly. Um, so I love them. But I do want to pull up for you guys real quick because this was the thing that I really liked. So the bags themselves, they're $15 up to the 11 by 11 size. So if you go smaller, it's the same price, but up to an 11 by 11 the bag is $15. If you want any of her grime guards and just the grime guards alone, the grime guards are $10. Um, but you can also do, and she sells bigger bags too. She sells pretty much whatever size you want and she'll do custom orders. Um, the other thing too is that uh, she'll also do sets. So if you buy the bag and the grime guard together, um, she will do a set. And she actually gives a discount price for doing a set. So it's $20 for the grime guard and the bag up to an 11 by 11 size, um, which saves you about $5 on the price. 
And I was really surprised. I think that her um, selection is great. I went on Facebook and kind of counted too. She had 65 every, what she calls everyday prints, which are what the ones that I got. She is a wide assortment of prints. She had 11 Christmas prints and 18 fall and Halloween prints. And if you already belong to her group, um, you'll see she's constantly uploading new prints and new styles um, every, seems like every single week. So I've just been really pleased. I got them really, really quickly. I think I ordered them on a Thursday and I received them in the mail. No, I ordered them on a Wednesday and I received them in the mail on a Monday. Um, so I thought that was really great. So it's Deanna's Frame Covers and Storage. It's the Facebook group. And I will put her information in the comment box below if you want to link to her group so that you can go and check her out because she was really, really awesome and very responsive and very, very fast with everything. But kind of off of that and on to the next thing and on to my next whip. This was, a, this was actually a new start for me that I didn't expect. Um, I was going to be working on my little ballerinas pattern. Um, however, I have a, a, a close family friend that is getting married in January. So once I found out her date, I kind of went back and forth. I was like, I might do something really small. Ultimately, I found a pattern that I just fell in love with that I think that they're really going to like. So I had to start on it right away. And um, I'm going to show you guys a picture of what it looks like. And this is actually a pattern that I got from um, Etsy. And it's called Little Room in the Attic. Let me make sure that's correct. Let me look at my notes. It's um, Little Room in the Attic. It's all one word is her Etsy store. And this is called the Watercolor Flower Wreath. And it's a PDF pattern. And this is what it's what it's going to look like. So it's supposed to look like uh, watercolors. I really, really like it. Really, really like the colors. And then you can kind of see she customized it for me in the middle to say their wedding date and to put their two names in there. She was very responsive, and she kind of says in the instructions because of the way that the wreath is, it's it's not it's not completely symmetrical or the 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 names in the center are not centered to what the wreath is. So she will actually build the PDF for you just upon request. If you send her a message and say, just tell her exactly what you want to say and she'll build the new PDF with the actual, um, um, names that she want and so she did that for me upon my request she responded within 24 hours and had the, the new PDF to me within 24 hours so um, I was really really happy with that I just absolutely love the colors and I started working on this um, these are all the different colors if you can see they kind of have bobbinated there beautiful beautiful colors and to kind of get and achieve that watercolor look, um, she does a lot of blended threads. So I know some people aren't fans of that. It doesn't bother me at all. So um, I did get started on this. I'm doing this on a 32 count, um, it's a 32 count even weave. Um, I think it's, is it Jobelin? I don't know, it's a 32 count even weave of some kind, <laughs> and it's in the color light taupe, and um, this is where I've gotten to thus far. So you can see my needle miners. I just got this little milk and cookie needle miner for Nifty Needle Nannies, and um, love it. I am working on, obviously you can see I'm working on the flower here. It's taking a lot of time because there's a lot of blended colors and there's probably about close to at least eight to ten different colors in the flower. So it's going to take a little while. Obviously this bottom part of the wreath is going to take the longest, but as I kind of finish that bottom part and, and come up the sides, um, it shouldn't take as long, but I, I love how it's turning out. I think the colors are really, really beautiful. Um, and at that Etsy shop, she has a lot of these different color. Her style is kind of like these watercolor patterns. Um, so she has a lot of really, really beautiful stuff. So I'm really, really happy with it. The pattern costs about $10. And um, it was well worth it. It was. It, it's just been a, a really pleasurable stitching experience. So that piece is really going to be my focus right now because obviously I have a deadline for that. I have to get that done by January. They are actually moving. They are not going to be living in the state where I am. So they're going to be living... Um, 
oh my gosh, where are they living? Somewhere in the Midwest. And so um, if I don't have it done, it's going to cost a lot for me to get it framed and shipped all the way up there. So I have to make sure I have this done by January. The next thing on my list is I actually have a finish. Um, I got a little bit distracted this past month. Um, as I've kind of been doing these videos and stuff, like I said, I got some comments that were discouraging and kind of shot my spirit down a little bit. So there was a moment that I just put cross stitching down um, and threw myself my own little pity party for just a second. Um, and then I'm kind of gotten back up on the on on the bandwagon. But um, I went to Hobby Lobby and I saw that they were having a sale on a lot of their needlework kits. So I was rummaging and rummaging and rummaging through there and I actually found these kits that I really really like. And I don't have a lot of seasonal decorations in my house and obviously stitching something and cross stitching something can take a lot of time. So um, I've always been jealous of people's wall hangs and stuff and I stumbled across these kits in the clearance section and they were like on clearance for about five dollars. And so I thought, well, it's worth a shot and I'll kind of see if I like it and I love them. And these kits, they're not cross stitch. Um, they are called sequin banner kits and they're actually put out by Design Works and Design Works makes these and they have all sorts of different banners that are seasonal but then they also have um, like calendars and stuff like that that you can do too and they don't take very long this one took me I think about three days to do and it's on kind of a felt canvas and all you're doing is just stitching on the sequins but it really adds I'm a sucker for glitter um, and bling so it adds a lot of bling to it and this is kind of the first one that I did, and this is kind of their Halloween themed one, so that I can hang this one up in my house. I'm really, really pleased with it. So I don't, I didn't keep the packaging, so I don't know what this one is called. Um, but if you go on Design Works, I think it's DesignWorks.com or to their website, you may be able to find it. So this is the first one that I did. Oh, let me turn it the right way. So you can see I really like the details on it. I thought it was just really cute and and colorful and I actually planned on putting these in my office but my husband really liked it and said that he thought these would be really cute to hang in our house. Um, so I'll kind of show you up a little bit more. Um, kind of the sequin details and stuff and it, you really can't see on the video how sparkly it is. Um, but in person it's really really sparkly so I really love it I thought this is just really fun and it was a kind of a nice break from cross stitching the one thing I have to say is these things are very very flimsy and there's no real backing to it so um I did buy some felts they actually have some peel on felts um that I'm going to try to um to use to peel on the back of this just so it makes it a little bit stiffer and also protects the stitching on the back and it even comes with a little banner hanger and this little string that you attach so that you can um, just this little piece of yarn so that you can attach it as a wall hanging so I'm gonna put this in my kitchen on my pantry door um, that kind of opens up into our living room I think it'll be a nice decoration for um, for kind of the upcoming Halloween and fall season. Um, I did get two more um, two more kits and actually now that I see the sticker the price was it looks like $5.75. Yeah I paid $5.75 for these and if they're still out there then they probably are even cheaper by now. Um, the next one I got is no surprise um, is a Jim Shore one and it's a sequin banner kit and it looks like this. So it's a Mr. Snowman I just thought it was fun to do these for um, for different seasonal occasions and um, this is what they actually come with they come with this is this is kind of the um, um, I don't know if it's called invisible thread but it's nylon thread I believe and then it comes with the um, all the packs of the sequins the banner hanger and um, you can sort of see on the pattern here all that you do the key is actually located on the banner itself at the top because you cut it out and then um, you stitch on these, there are little tiny X's or there's little symbols and you'll stitch the kind of the coordinating color over the symbol. So if you can cross stitch, and I am not a very good crafty person, I don't sew at all. So if you can do any of that, you can do these. And they're really, really fast, um, fun and easy, kind of just like a nice easy finish for you if you just want something else to hang in your home. So I thought these were cool. Um, 
Oh, and they come with the clear beads too because you sew on, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to sew on the sequin, you put the sequin on and then you put a clear bead on top. And that really kind of helps the sequin pop. They almost look like in person, the best way to describe it is they almost look like raindrops. They're really cool. Um, so I, I got that one, which is a Jim Shore one. You know I love me some Jim Shore. Um, and then the other one I got is called Land That I Love, and it's kind of like a 4th of July, but I think I can also kind of hang this in the summer. Um, um, type 1, it's a little angel with a little flag. So I'm going to look out for these um, as I go to different Hobby Lobbies and stuff. If I still see that there's more of these out there for different seasons, then I will probably get some more. Yeah, and it says everything that it comes with here, too. So I thought these were really cool. Really neat, just something something different. While I was on clearance, I also got this um, this Design Works kit, and this kit has some significance to me. I'm not really going to go into detail about it, but um, basically, my husband and I are are working on starting a family, and we have been trying for a couple of years, and um, we are now in the process of pursuing some alternative options, um, including adoption, and um, this was a kit I, that I always kind of said that I would stitch for my first child and so I actually saw it on clearance and I just couldn't resist because for me it's a significance of that I'm putting a positive thought out there in the world that um, that maybe we can start a family. So not going to get choked up about that but um, it just it, it means something to me and I, I think it's fun and cute and so um, hopefully I'll be starting this in the next year or so. So um, this is also a design works kit um, and let me see if there's a name. Oh it's called ABC Animals and I just think that's really sweet. We were talking about this though. What is a vole? apparently some sort of rat animal something but um, we were thinking about all the other V animal names like vulture and why the vole mm. and they didn't come up with a in animal instead they put nest so I don't know we were talking about all the different animal names and why they chose what they chose and um, ultimately I just don't think it's just really cute I'm a sucker for really just very colorful patterns and stuff so I love this and for whatever reason I love that there's a unicorn I think the unicorn is really cute so and it's a kit it comes with all sorts of the all of the regular you know threads and stuff like that I've never did I do a design works kit before I don't think so I don't think I've done a design works kit um, but happy with the quality of the materials wouldn't really change anything. The floss is already sorted and everything on it. So um, so I have that kit. So I'm going to keep that kit um, until I know that I'm ready to stitch it. The rest of the stuff I have is all haul related as well. Um, so I just want to go through a couple of these things really quickly. Um, I have my World of Cross Stitching magazine that I got. And this is... August 2016 is the World of Cross Stitching pattern and um, World of Cross Stitching magazine. I'm sorry for that month. And you can kind of see some of the patterns and things that are down there. Out of the ones that I received, this is probably my least favorite, to be honest. Um, they didn't have as many patterns in this one that I liked. That, well, there were some that I liked. Don't get me wrong. There were a lot that I liked in here, but some that just aren't my taste. Um, so in this particular magazine came two freebies. This was one freebie, which is another little card, just like the rabbit that I did last month. So there's a card um, on the inside, and you actually stitch on Ada this piece here. It's got the threads and everything that are provided. I did look at the pattern for this. There is some of that fractional back stitching that I hate. Um, however, there's not as much of it on this one as there was in the bunny. So I think these are awesome. These are great because they're all-purpose cards. I can use it for birthdays or a get well card or a thank you card or anything so um, I'm definitely going to keep this in my stash and will definitely stitch this when I need it. Um, it also came with a um, sweet peas bookmark and I'm going to hold it back because it basically is the pattern. Um, it's got the key and everything on the back of what you need to stitch it. Really cute. Don't really do bookmarks and stuff but if I ever need to I can. Um, and then in the actual magazine itself the duck is Super cute. Um, probably would never stitch him, but do love him. He's got a lot of really um, good personality in him. And I did already look at the sneak peek for next month, and I think I'm really going to like next month. Um, 
The two designs that I wanted to point out in here is called Shop Till You Drop. It's by Angela Poole. And these are, they turn them into little cards, but I like them. I don't know why, but I'm always appeal, I'm always drawn to patterns that are like of little, little shops or stores, things like that. Love that. And then um, the other pattern that I was kind of drawn to in here is this one. And this is called Home Tweet Home. And it's by Helts. Koopal ditch, I guess, and it says it's one of those little blackboard um, kind of chalky looking um, patterns, which I, I think are really popular right now. And it says our nest is blessed. But I think that's really cute. I even kind of think that I may like this better if it were stitched not on black. If it were stitched on navy or blue, like a light blue. Um, don't know how the colors would turn out, but um, but I do really like that a lot too. So that's it, that was in that magazine. Um, the other stuff that I got for this month was haul kind of related to, I went on this kind of binge or kick per se with a lot of these vintage cross stitch magazines. Nell did a video about a lot of the um, cross stitch magazines that she got that were haul that she got I think on a really, really good deal. And um, there were some that I really, really liked. So um, I found that um, Cross Stitch and Country Crafts by far has got to have some of the best and most beautiful vintage designs. Um, they seem to be designed as something that's a little bit more classic. But there were also some things that I found um, from things that Nell showed, but also from things that I saw online that I was just instantly drawn to. So one of the ones that she showed that I kind of had to have, I found it for a really good price. Um, someone just happened to post it on Stash Unload for 50 cents. Um, it's by Cross Stitch Sampler. This one is Christmas of of 1991 don't really like much else that's in the magazine but I got it for 50 cents um, and um, it says discover the joys of Christmas in cross stitch and it's really I forget what the name of this pattern on the front is but I really just got it for the pattern on the front I love that I love 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 the colors I love kind of the kooky shape um, I just think it's just beautiful and it looks like it would be really simple to stitch and would be really cool to hang up during Christmas. So um, love that. Had to have that. Got that. The other thing that I got was as I was looking through magazines and stuff too, I found that I don't really have any Halloween patterns. I'm not typically drawn to Halloween or fall patterns. I don't decorate my house big for Halloween or anything. I do a few small things, but um, I did want some more things for the fall. And um, I found the Just Cross Stitch Halloween, the 2014 Special Collector's Edition online. I found it brand new. Um, I think I got, I got it on eBay, I know for sure. I want to say maybe I paid six or seven dollars for it and I loved almost every single pattern on the front page so um, I'm gonna show you guys a closer look just at a couple of the patterns that I really really liked but this is what the um, magazine looks like in particular um, so I just have three patterns and they're on the front page that I was really drawn to and this one does it tell me who it's by it doesn't just says trick or treat. So this is my favorite, by far. The little kids dressed in the costume on the way into the spooky house. Love it. Love the dinosaur guy. Super cute. Loving it. So love that one. Um, the next one I like is called the Halloween Hoot Owl, and this is designed by Ursula Michael. Cause he's super cute. Look at the little spider. It's super cute. Love that. And then this one is called Sail at the Bubbling Cauldron. And it's um, kind of looks like a house. Like I said, I'm kind of drawn to houses and store shops and all that kind of stuff. And ooh, the glare is not great on that. There's a couple specialty buttons and things in here too. It's really cute. So I love those patterns. Um, so that is the Just Cross Stitch 2014 Collector's Edition for Halloween. So love that. So eventually, eventually, <laughs> when I kind of get on my um, 
on my kick for cross stitching um, again and kind of get into some new patterns for myself then that will be what I kind of plan on doing the last thing is is that like I mentioned cross stitching country crafts love a lot of their patterns um, and a lot of them are old kind of vintage style patterns but they are just classic they kind of carry through from um, um, from time to time so I stumbled across this book that I found that's called 101 best love designs from cross stitch and country crafts and I started like zooming in on the front cover and a lot of times we like, can go on Amazon and stuff and kind of flip through the book a little bit so you can see like what patterns and stuff are in there I couldn't find anything and so it was killing me because I really liked this book um, but I was afraid that some of the patterns that I wanted weren't going to be in there. Well, I was pleasantly surprised when I got it. I ordered it off of eBay for like $10. Um, and it took a little while to get to me. It took about a week and a half. But this book is still available online, typically for $15 or less. And I absolutely love it absolutely love it so I am going to do a flip through of this book so that you guys can see the whole book just because I couldn't find anything else out there um, about this book and uh, I thought that there might be some other people that are really interested in some of these patterns or interested in the patterns kind of as a collection because a lot of them I recognize because stitchers are still doing them um, that I wanted to kind of give the opportunity to see kind of what you would get for what you buy. Um, now this book is pretty hefty. It is a hardcover book. I have some graph paper in here that I'm using kind of to mark the pages to show you guys, but um, it is a hardcover book. It is pretty hefty. It's going to stand the test of time, and it's, pr you know, like I said, it's pretty heavy. And you can sort of see how big the book is. Um, I want to see if I can tell you exactly how many pages there are. And sometimes when they say there's like 101 designs or 90 designs, typically it's like 80, 80 of the designs I don't like. And, and I absolutely love this, um, love most of the designs that are in here. It looks like there's almost 200 pages that are actually in this book. It has pictures, really nice color pictures, and pictures of the completed designs. I am not going to show or try not to show any of the patterns themselves, but I will tell you, the patterns are awesome. The instructions are awesome for these patterns. The patterns are in full color and the instructions are very very in-depth so it not only totally explains to you how to do the cross stitching or the specialty stitches that are included in these designs but um, it also has really good instructions about finishing that are really really easy to follow I will tell you if you're a beginner cross stitcher or beginner you know to intermediate like kind of what I am some of these patterns are going to be really kind of intimidating at first to look at because it seems like a lot of the ones that are these best love designs I don't know if cross stitching country crafts is like that in general but a lot of the ones that are in here have specialty stitches blended threads are full coverage or also implement hardanger um, in some way shape or form so this is what the outside of the book looks like and, and we'll walk through kind of each of the patterns and this is what the back looks like and um, I'm going to show you there's very few patterns in here that I do not like so let's get started with this the first section and they're all broken into sections and categories are called the all-time favorites it says from busybody cats to relaxing to the relaxing pastime of fly fishing. All of the clever designs in this chapter have a personal meaning when stitched for someone special. Or choose any of them to stitch for your own all-time favorite. So they have these nice stories at the beginning of each chapter. And then you can see on this one, this is oops, going the wrong way. Cats and quilts. The next one they have antique trains and planes and a hummingbird sampler. So antique trains and planes. And a lot of these, these pictures, oh my gosh, photography has gotten so much better than it was back in the 90s. Um, because a lot of these have krennic and um, more blingy elements and stuff. And the colors look really muted. But um, when you look at the patterns and look at the threads that they call for, they're really, really vibrant. This one is called Botanical Fruit, and I think I've seen somebody stitching these before. 
much. These are really, really pretty. I love these. And then this one, I got to cover up the pattern. Um, it's called Flies and Lures. And if you have, whoa, 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 whoa. If you have someone who does fishing, whoa, they would love this. This has a lot of Krennic in it, and it has a lot of, um, it has some specialty stitches, but not hard specialty stitches that really make it come to life. So I don't think you can really even see on the computer from, from my filming what it really looks like, but this is awesome if you have somebody who does any type of fishing. Um, the next one is called the Blue Ribbon Winners. It says, Welcome to a Blue Ribbon Collection of Exquisite Cross-Stitch Designs. Each of the glorious pieces in this chapter is truly a work of art and will provide a challenge for even the most accomplished stitchers. So these are going to be um, really, really detailed pieces, but turn out beautifully. I know I have seen somebody doing this or working on these because I think you can stitch them as a trio or you can kind of stitch them all together. There's that one, which I think is like Amish country or something. These two, it's called Sunday Best and Young Man's Fancy. Oh, Amid Amish Life is the name of the pattern um, for that first one. This one is Sunday Best and Young Man's Fancy. And I will tell you, when I saw these patterns at first, they were on the back of the book. I thought they were the creepiest <laughs> um, looking children. However, Looking at the patterns now and looking at them with the pictures actually close up and in my face, they're gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And I think these are also full coverage pieces. But like for Sunday Best, like the, the bottom of her whatever pants those are and her like apron are specialty stitches. And they're gorgeous. And then this is the young man that kind of is the accompanying piece really really pretty this one is one of the reasons that I bought this book don't know how to do Hardanger but think that this is gorgeous it's called Christmas House and then the one next to it is called Santa's List the Christmas House is whoops I have seen somebody actually complete this and I love it you actually do two pieces you cross stitch this piece and then you stitch this piece and you do hard anger obviously for the areas that kind of have the negative space and then you put them on top of each other and it makes like a little Christmas window love this we'll do this before I die I promise however <laughs> I looked at the pattern for this for a long time it is so complicated. Um, there are so many specialty stitches in here and Hardanger that this is something that I think is going to be just a lifelong dream to do because all of these, the border, the house, everything is specialty stitches. But it's absolutely beautiful. And I love Santa's list too. Gosh, that's gorgeous. And that is full coverage. That pattern is insane, but it's really, really beautiful. Um, really, really love that piece too. The one knock I will give on this book, the one knock, is because it is a hardcover book that I think if you're trying to photocopy patterns out of this, sometimes the pattern runs towards the middle, not all the way into the middle, but runs towards the middle. So it may be hard to kind of get that quality photocopy off of the creased, you know, spine of the book area. So just be cognizant of that. Not all the patterns are like that. And I think maybe only one or two patterns actually get close enough to the crease to where I go, mm, you may have a problem photocopying that, but most of them, it's, it's not a problem at all. And then this last one is called, it's, a, it's called the Spanish Sampler. This is really awkward to hold up, but that's really pretty. Of that. Okay. Um, the next section of the book is called Country Collectibles. It says, What a spectacular assortment of homespun designs for country lovers everywhere. From their hens nestled in their baskets to a quiet alphabet sampler surrounded by old fashioned motifs, we have a country collectible for everyone. This one is called Nesting Hens. And even though I'm born in Texas, I'm not much of a country girl. That's really cute. 
There's those. I'm losing my light. It's raining outside. Um, this is Monday Meddler and Harvest Helper. They're kind of a dual. Then I have Country Cousins in the Country Alphabet. Country Cousins, Country Alphabet. And then this last one is called Country Delicious, which gosh, I think the frame for this is so cute. They even have like a little apple cut, cut out of the mat board. It's really cute. Do a great job. The next section is called Childhood Delights, and it says, Bunnies and bears and babies, oh my. Proud moms and their precious little ones will be thrill thrilled with these sweet designs. Motifs from many of these heirloom quality projects can be used to create small keepsakes as well. With this adorable collection, it won't take long to find your favorite childhood delight. This first one is called Cottage Christening, and it's going to be really hard to see on the camera, but those are little bunnies. It's really cute. That would take forever. You gotta really like that kit. <laughs> um, this next one I absolutely adore. I will definitely do this if I have any friends who have twins because I'm a twin myself and there's not very many samplers I think out there that um, are for twins and I love this. Love it, love it, love it. One of those things I think is just classic. Um, the next one on here is called cool, cool Penguin and Polar Bear that I think that you can stitch to turn into a koozie. And then there's another one called Special Friends. So here's the twins, which I love. Like two peas in a pod, true gifts from God. Love that. With their names. Love me some penguins. So I love the Keep It Cool. And this is the, whoops, whoops, whoops. Special Friends. Really sweet. The next page is the pencil alphabet and the bedtime silhouette. And I think the bedtime silhouette is really pretty. It's always good to have an alphabet, though. That would be kind of cute idea for a teacher. And this is the bedtime silhouette, which I think is really pretty. Um, that's it for that. Um, the next section, oh my goodness, it's a lot more work than I thought it was. Um, it's called Christmas Trims and Treasures. The Christmas season is a wonderful time to pass along special family traditions. Begin yours by stitching these dazzling decorations and gifts. If you start now, you can complete these Christmas treasures just in time to share with those you love. And this one is their nativity scene, and they did these individually, but I think you could also stitch them on just on one piece of fabric, too. I think they're really pretty. Look at that camel! All the different wise men and shepherds and Mary and Joseph and then the angel. Love that. Then they have a whole bunch of other little things too. So they have um, some ornaments that are religious symbols. They have Russian Christmas angels that say Gloria. And then they have a woodland Santa. So the religious symbols, this is the Russian Christmas angels, let's say Gloria in Excelsis Deo, and the Woodland Santa, that's right, Woodland Santa, he's super cute and woodsy. Then we have the festive Hardinger ornaments, so more Hardinger, and the heavenly angel ornaments, and then the carousel polar bear and reindeer ornaments. So all of these are ornaments. There's the Hardinger. Whoops. Keep doing this the wrong way. Heavenly angel ornaments. And then the carousel. Bear and deer. Oh, and this one's my favorite. So, I see um people that stitch on like um on a lot of the 90s magazines and stuff that stitch sweaters and all that kind of stuff so most of them are really you know just outdated a little more tacky looking this is 
awesome. So this is called the Mischief Mischief Making Reindeer. And I could totally, if I were to stitch a sweater ever in my life, could totally see myself doing this. So I think this is awesome. So you see, whoop, 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 pattern. Oh, hold on. Let me rearrange here. So you see the reindeer with the lights, pulling at the lights. And then on the back, it's a naked Christmas tree. Super cute. Love it. Love it. The next section is called Floral Fancies. It says, celebrate the beauty of flowers with these freshest spring designs. As you stitch your way through this glorious assortment of colorful blooms and breathtaking gardens, you will be left with lasting floral treasures to be enjoyed a lifetime. Season after season, these radiant flowers will add a romantic touch to the room of your home. So this is called In the Garden. It's three separate pieces. This next one is called Victorian Tapestry. And then there's a teacup bell pull, which are teacups, but like for different seasons, for the four seasons. And then the rose garden sampler, which I know I have seen people work on. This is whoop, Victorian tapestry, the teacup bell pull, and then this is the rose garden sampler, which is really beautiful. So I think that's really pretty. Then it's the rose tea linens, so things you can stitch on linens, and the um, bouquet of sunshine. So there's the linens, little teacup linens, which are really cute. And then kind of a sampler, little sunflower sampler. We're getting close to being done. Let's see, there's a lot of really good designs in here. Um, holiday treats is next. So it says in this festive chapter, we celebrate an array of holidays with special projects to get you in gear for memorable days from the spine tingling Halloween house shown here to a delightful box of Valentine chocolates, which is also close to my favorite. A special stitching treat is sure to be found on the next few pages. So this one's called Halloween hauntings and it includes the kind of scary haunted house. And I'm wondering if, if some of that's in glow-in-the-dark thread. And then they have some earrings and a design for a sweater. There is Tiny Finger Puppets in the Christmas Joy Bell Pool, along with the Candy Heart, which I think is awesome. So the finger puppets are really cute. I think they have really cute expressions. The Joy Bell Pull is really pretty. And then this is the Candy Hearts. So they actually made some button covers out of them too, which I think is really cute. Um, kind of silly, but really awesome. Um, and then this box of stitched candies. And they're actually specialty stitches in a lot of those candies. And I think that's such a cool idea. That would be such a neat decoration. And it even tells you how to make the box, the candy box for them. Then it's Christmas napkins and placemats, spring napkins and placemats, summer napkins and placemats, and harvest napkins and placemats. So decorating for all seasons. So there's Christmas. There's spring cute. There's summer, 4th of July, and there's fall, which are the pumpkins. Like, I don't think these look outdated at all. I, have, I would still stitch these. These are still, I think, of current taste. Next section is the sensational samplers. Creating a sampler is a great joy for many stitchers. We've chosen a variety to celebrate everything from the beautiful sights in nature to heartwarming weddings. Each sampler is a unique work of art sure to become a cherished family keepsake. And this one is called the Wedding Sampler. And it looks like lace the way that it's stitched. I think a lot of this stuff, I think if you were to just stitch it on a different fabric maybe, like, whoop, like, I think the fabric dates this probably more than anything. So I think if you stitch it on a different fabric, I think it would be 
really pretty, but look how delicate that looks. That just looks so delicate. And then I think they have like a little, yeah, a little pillow that you can touch to, which is cute. Um, this one I love, love, love. It's called the Gathering Honey Sampler. And then they have the Anniversary Sampler. The Gathering Honey Sampler. Isn't that cute? Anniversary Sampler. The Quaker Sampler and the Dutch Sampler. So here's the Quaker Sampler. And the Dutch sampler. This Dutch sampler is pretty awesome. I think that's super cool. Whoop. There's a lot of people that would probably stitch that. Um, that's it for that section. Okay, we're on to the last section. And this is called Needlework Necessities. So it says, Needlework enthusiasts will be in their glory when creating the stunning stitchery theme project shown here and on the next few pages. These products are not only fun to make, but serve as wonderful stitching aids as well. We have also included some beautiful frame pieces to adorn the walls of your loving home. So this one is called Sew a Fine Seam. And I think this looks like a scissor fob. No, scissor cover. It looks maybe like a fob and like a little box cover maybe. And it says, so a fine seam. See the little scissor fob looking thing and then the little scissors covers. These are called um, handmade labels. So it's a whole bunch of different labels. And then one that's called antique needlework tools. So here's all the different little labels and stuff are really cute. Grandma's girl. And then these are the needlework tools. This one says, as ye sew, and I love this one because it says in the middle, as ye sh as, ugh, as ye sew, so shall ye rip. Isn't that the truth? And then this next one is called Collector's Cabinet. So they have it, I guess, installed in kind of a little cabinet, a little sewing basket. And that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. Absolutely couldn't recommend this book more. Um, if you like some of the um, cross and country crafts patterns, you will absolutely love these. Like I said, the camera does not do it justice. The patterns look great in here. The pictures obviously are just a little more outdated because they're the 90s. Um, but I think a lot of these patterns are just classic and timeless. This is definitely a book I'm going to keep in my, um, in my collection for a very, very, very 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 long time so i hope you guys enjoyed the day today hope you enjoyed my update video there will be more to come and i hope you guys have a great week and a great rest of the month bye